Hi guys, Andre from Conveyor of Randomness here and today I'll be showing you how to remove and replace the battery in an iPhone just like this. If you saw my video on this iPhone 5C battery, then you'll know that it can't hold a charge for more than 40 minutes. If you didn't see that video, I'll link to it up there. Since that video, I decided to resurrect it and unsurprisingly, the battery is completely dead. You can't even plug it in to initiate a charge. I had a thought of trying to fix it by replacing the battery myself. So I went on Amazon and found the iPhone 5C replacement battery kit, which includes the tools required for the replacement. I'll put that link to the kit in the description below. The battery in this kit has been manufactured and tested under strict quality control conditions to meet the appropriate standards. It's actually a higher capacity battery which when installed will replace the current iPhone's 1550mAh battery and upgrade it to a 2010mAh battery. If you do find yourself wanting to try this yourself because you either have an iPhone that doesn't charge or the power drains too quickly, make sure you get the battery that's specific to the phone model and most importantly remember that once you manually open the phone in most cases it will void any warranty you have on it. The phone is long out of warranty, isn't supported by the most up-to-date iOS and is almost destined for the bin and if this process doesn't work then I'm not losing much. I'll show you a brief description of the steps to remove and replace the dead battery of this iPhone 5C, showing you that you don't have to be a professional to do this. The complete list of items required for this will be listed in the description below. If you are following this, make sure that your phone is turned off and the battery level is about below 25%, just to reduce the chance of the battery catching fire or exploding, which is a risk throughout this procedure, so please do take care. The first thing you want to do is partially detach the screen from the phone to allow you access to the internals of the phone. We will completely detach the screen from the phone later. Unscrew the two portal lobe screws that are on either side of the charging port on the bottom of the phone. With the suction cup, press it onto the screen just above the home button, making sure there is a tight seal, as this will help you lift the screen away from the phone safely. While holding the phone in one hand, firmly lift the suction cup to separate the screen. You may need to use the plastic tool to give you a bit more stability to allow easier separation. Just remember that the screen and the phone are still connected via the display cables at the top of the phone. For a while, until you have removed the screen, you will have to work with the phone at this 90 degree angle. So you can either prop it up against something or keep a hold of it like I'm doing. Before we start anything else, remove the suction cup from the screen. Next, remove the two 1.6 millimeter screws that secure the bracket covering the battery connector to the board. Remove the bracket from the board. Next you want to disconnect the battery connector from its socket on the board. When you are lifting anything from the board, make sure that you are only lifting the connector, not anything attached to the board itself. It's important to remember that if you are removing or reconnecting anything from the board, always make sure that the battery is disconnected, following this method first. The second panel to remove is towards the top of the battery, where you will have to remove four screws this time. Within these four screws there are three different sizes. Just remember where these different size screws went because this will be important when you're reassembling the unit later.
Remove the panel from the board to expose the screen connectors. Using a plastic tool, you will now disconnect the front facing camera and the sensor cable connector. The third cable that connects the screen to the display is the LCD cable. Lift this carefully from the board and the screen should be able to freely move away from the phone. Now we have removed the screen from the board, we can now finish off removing the battery from the phone. Next it's time to remove the battery. The battery is held in place to the phone via adhesive strips that run down the entire length of the battery and these strips can be very awkward to remove. Use a tweezer below the bottom of the battery to unfold the battery adhesive tab. This will allow you to reveal the head of the adhesive strip and help remove the battery. Pry the adhesive tab away from the phone before it breaks. Pull too hard and this will happen. Obviously this wasn't meant to happen. What you want to do is cut between the adhesive tabs to give you two sections of the tab to pull out. Pull one of the tabs steadily and slowly away and out from the phone so that it slips out from between the phone and the battery. Carefully making sure that it doesn't stick onto any part of the phone internals when it does come out. The strip is very versatile and will stretch quite far before it breaks. Once the whole strip is free, repeat the same process on the second strip. I actually managed to free the battery by getting a thin guitar string underneath the battery starting at the top of the battery, with each end of the guitar string out of the sides. I carefully slid the string down the battery as if it was slicing cheese with a cheese wire, essentially detaching the adhesive strip from the battery. Now the battery is removed, I just quickly need to remove the adhesive tabs from the phone. If you did this the correct way, you won't need this step. Now you want to begin the process of putting a new battery into the phone. With the new strips from the replacement kit, lay them down in the space where the previous strips were, making sure that the tab at the top has enough space to be accessed if you need it again to remove the battery in the future. Remove the pink backing to reveal the top sticky side, which will adhere to the battery when you put it in. Carefully line up the battery and make sure it is in the correct orientation and the battery connector is lined up with its duck. Place it on the sticky adhesive strips and press the battery in place to ensure the battery sticks to the strips. Now we want to reattach the screen. We want to do it in the reverse procedure of what we did to disassemble the phone. Reattach the three screen connectors, the LCD, sensor and front facing camera cables to the board. Pressing firmly each connector, making sure that it is click connected securely to the appropriate slot on the board.
place the bigger panel back on the phone. Remember those three different screws I mentioned earlier? Don't forget to put these back in the same holes that they came from. Now the screen has been reconnected, click and reattach the battery connector to the back of the board. Replace the metal bracket back on the phone and screw in the screws. Internally, you're now done. Time to reattach the screen display to the phone by clicking all of the clips in place all the way around the edges of the phone. Finally, reattach the two pentalobe screws at the bottom of the phone. And there you go, all done. The new battery should have a little bit of charge in it, so if you turn it on and have connected everything back together correctly, then the iPhone should power up. If it doesn't, you may need to reopen the phone again and check the connectors. Hopefully that was straightforward and easy to follow. Just remember, please only attempt to do this if you feel competent and confident in your skills. You may need to rewatch or rewind and fast forward a few times if you are following this step by step as you do it. It's been almost a week since I did the battery replacement. As soon as I did the replacement, I charged it fully to 100% and has since been letting it drain gradually over the week. Once it has died for the first time following the replacement, I will charge it again and use it as normal. It's definitely a lot better now, lasting almost a week in standby than discharging fully in under 40 minutes. This means that the battery replacement was definitely a success. Now you should have an iPhone that works at least to its full capacity without the stress of battery issues that either limit or prevent you from using it. If you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. That's all for me today, I'll see you on the next one, bye.